Okay, in this video we're looking at capital letters that have reflection symmetry. And for those that do, we want to describe all the lines of symmetry. So we'll start actually by looking at the letter H. And that's one example of a letter that has two lines of reflection symmetry. And the idea is that you could fold the letter right over this vertical line and you'll get an exact image on both sides. You can also do so on the horizontal line. But to see this in action and to understand what we mean by folding and looking at reflection symmetry, I'm going to pull up this GeoGebra um, program that I pulled up. And there's lots of great stuff with GeoGebra. Here's just one that someone else put together. Here, what you do is you, you have the line of symmetry and you line it up. And once you have this vertical line, you can see that the shape will fold over that piece. And the important part is that we get an exact match when we fold it. If the match is exact here, then we have a line of symmetry. Now the letter H has two lines of symmetry, and we're just showing one right here. Right? This is a vertical line of symmetry, and it also I'm sure you can imagine uh, it having the horizontal line of symmetry right here. So we can say that the letter H has two lines of symmetry. Going from there, I think it's easy to, to work through the letters, imagining how these things would fold. So if we look at the letter A, right? the letter A if I drew it perfectly, of course, you would see this vertical line of symmetry. It doesn't have a horizontal line of symmetry because you can't fold it that way. Um, the letter B, right, here it has this horizontal line of symmetry, but not a vertical line. And in, in this program right here, we can actually, if this is our line of symmetry right here, you can see it happening. If I draw in terms of this line right here, that's my horizontal line of reflection, if I, all I do is draw the bottom half, right, and then the top half is a mirror of this, I get the letter B. And that's just one way to show how that line of symmetry works by having that mirror image actually draw simultaneously with the bottom half. You can see how the letter B is built. Um, oops. And that is just, you know, that's one way oops, to set up the symmetry here. Anyways, keep going. With the letter C, is there any symmetry there? Yes. In fact, if I draw it like this, Right, you can see that horizontal line again. What about the letter D? Yeah, well, again, again, it depends on how you draw it, but if I draw it almost perfectly there, we can fold it in half right here. And then we keep going. The letter E. The letter E is a horizontal line as well. We can fold it there. And the letter F. Here, the letter F has no lines of symmetry. Right? The same thing as the letter G. There are no lines of symmetry there. Right? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. We covered H already has two lines of symmetry. How about the letter I? Well, if we draw it this way, we can see that it has both horizontal and vertical lines of symmetry, right? What about the letter J? The J has no lines of symmetry. K? Well, if we draw it like this, we can fold it in half this way with a horizontal line and get some symmetry there. What's next? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L. L has no lines of symmetry. M has a line of symmetry, right? A vertical line right here. We can fold it in half. How about the letter N? Well, N does not have any lines of symmetry, right? You might imagine that we can fold it vertically, but there is no exact match there. O is a fun one because it's a circle. We have infinite lines of symmetry. We can draw lines anywhere here, right? Anywhere we draw a line, we could fold this shape in half. Okay, next we have P and P has no lines of symmetry. The letter Q is a special case, and I thought it was not symmetrical at first, but then a student pointed out to me, uh, if you draw a line right here, for example, and that's, you know, letter Q. Um, if you draw a line of symmetry through this line and through the center of the circle, right, you have symmetry. So the letter Q does have symmetry. R also has no lines of symmetry. How about S? Well, S looks like it might fold, but again, it has no lines of symmetry. The letter T does have symmetry, right? It has a vertical line. We could fold it in half there. The letter U also has a vertical symmetry. So does V. And W. X is also an interesting case. And at first, I thought it just had two lines of symmetry. But if we set it up in a certain way, right? Um, we have our vertical line of symmetry. Oops, fix that. We have our vertical line of symmetry. Well, 
It's having a hard time getting it. Oh, okay, there we go. Our horizontal line of symmetry. And we also have to remember that the lines on X itself are also lines of symmetry, right? So there are actually four lines of symmetry on the letter X um, that you can fold the letter around and get a mirror image. Okay, the letter Y has a vertical line of symmetry. And Z has no lines of symmetry. Anyway, well, just working our way through the alphabet and examining lines of symmetry is a good introduction into how um, this mirroring and reflection process works. Hope this helped.